the thing that I love so much about this, this problem or this mystery was, first of all, it's 70 million years old. Nobody's ever seen one fly. The thing I like most doing is taking the ideas that no one would ever act on that are fun and take them as far as I can. So for instance, there are all those times when you're like a little kid in elementary school and you thought, man, if I had a pet dinosaur, how cool would it be to ride that to school? Anyway, when I was a kid, it was the 1980s. And the thing that was interesting about the 1980s, it was actually okay to be smart. People, it was okay to be rich. It was like we had real heroes and you could actually try to aspire something without the entire world wanting to cut you down. So the 80s was kind of funky and cool, and I like that. Anyway, if you go back to, there's a guy named Paul McCready, who in the 70s did these airplanes called the Gossamer Albatross and the Gossamer Condor. They were human-powered airplanes that flew over the English Channel and whatnot. And he got a lot of, a lot of uh, notoriety and PR from that. Well, later in the 80s, I think he got uh, money from, memory serves right, Johnson, Wax, something like that. And for the Smithsonian, Discovery built a one-half scale pterosaur model, radio control, of the Quetzalcoatlus northropi uh, species, which was reputed to be the largest flying one um, of the Cretaceous era, right before the great extinction of dinosaurs in that like 65, 70 million uh, year range. Anyway, it was half scale, it wasn't super accurate in terms of the body, like some things were kind of jacked up, but for me as a little kid in the 80s, that was super cool. And also, if you think of Matthew Broderick in the movie War Games, when they went and found the professor who had designed the uh, computer system to basically strategize thermonuclear war uh, of the 1980s Cold War time. He had become a recluse and built his own radio control pterosaur too. So that's cool. Anyway, let's go back to, I don't know, 2011, 2012, right before I started doing the Omega car prototype. And that's my uh, recyclable high efficiency car concept. I don't know how I got this idea, but I was thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, a full-scale pterosaur is effectively the size of a medium fixed-wing aircraft. And if I had one, I could fly it. <laughs> so anyway, um, no, I'm not trying to win the coolest Darwin Award ever. But um, to anybody who smart likes to think of building things that likes animal nature, and I certainly like those things, um, you get to thinking. People love dinosaurs. They capture the imagination. Okay, a pterosaur is not technically a dinosaur. Um, the nerds will get on my case if I call a pterosaur a dinosaur. Anyway, so the things had the better part of a 40-foot wingspan. In Genius Garage, last year, the students in the aerospace program and I, we built a Sopwith Camel biplane. It had a 28-foot wingspan. The pterosaur is way bigger than the airplane. And nobody's quite gotten it right. The thing that I love so much about this, this problem or this mystery was, first of all, it's 70 million years old. Nobody's ever seen one fly. They haven't. And all we have are incomplete skeletons, primarily, of the largest ones people are extrapolating and interpolating between you know, what they have of the bones and such. And then they have to you know, look at them in the nature and how they fit together to best piece together how this animal worked. So not only do you have paleontology solving the mystery of a puzzle in the rocks, in geology, right? But you also have biomechanics to figure out. Not only that, but it's a fantastic aerospace engineering pro problem and project to figure out. And unlike a fixed wing aircraft where it's a rigid structure and easy to engineer all the aerospace and fluid dynamic aspects of it, an animal moves, it flexes, it grows, it changes. That is vastly more difficult to engineer and figure out. So I had to do it. Anyway, there's some things that, uh, you know, I dreamed about that many years ago and lots of jokes that some of my coworkers would remember. Um, a lot of laughs at my expense, perhaps. <laughs> Anyway, so this year in Genius Garage with the race cars and then the aerospace building this, I started telling my students about my idea again. And I started seeing some new materials uh, for membranes because it's the wing membrane that is so complex, you know? Because pterosaurs effectively, their bone structure, you know, in many ways is not much different than a mammal or anything. But pterosaurs, their pinky finger, their tear is very, very long. A bat, basically all of the bones come down and are in the wing membrane. But in a pterosaur, it's a long pinky finger. And then they have these three fingers for gra grappling, for grabbing. And then effectively the thumb bone or the pteroid bone came straight out and controlled the wing membrane right here. So they have control of the wing membrane. Isn't that cool? Gets into like a uh, bio fixed wing aircraft in that nature. So I loved it. Anyway, this summer I started telling the students, I'm going to build this thing. It's going to be great. And um, so most of them laughed at me, which is fun. I 
love it when students laugh at the teacher or the mentor. Except one of them thought it was cool, but it was kind of dorky. The other thought it was cool, but he didn't get it until I showed him like the cool carbon fiber rods and he's like, okay, you win, that's cool. So anyway, long story short, yes, we built it. I built it and it's pretty cool. But the first thing I realized during this project was I got in here and like from the line from Jaws, oh, we're gonna need a bigger boat. And typically I like to design everything in my head. It's a lot easier, it's a lot faster for me that way. However, I realized when I started working on it, this thing is so big, it fills up the entire facility. I can't see the whole thing at once easily. So I actually had to do a couple little drawings, <laughs> just quickly, so I had a better spatial understanding and conceptualizing, because it's too hard for me to see the whole thing at once. Like a car is pretty small, but theirs was enormous. Anyway, so built it over the summer in between, you know, doing the races with the students and engineering the race cars and the airplanes and building and kept going and going and going. It was looking good. And it was a lot of fun. I'll give you one hint. So the eyes are actually magnifying glasses that I painted the back of because like who sells giant dinosaur sized eyes? <laughs> you got to bake them. But anyway, um, it's really cool. There's um, to create something so large that I don't have hundreds of millions of years of evolutionary time right now to develop materials. Of course, had to use, there's steel in it, there's aluminum, there's carbon fiber sheet, there's carbon fiber tubes, there's fiberglass, there's uh, fascinating uh, composites in relation to the membranes. And yeah, actually that's a faux fur on there because pterosaurs, uh, people are seeing in the fossils that they actually had some uh, fur-like substances and such. So, you know, there's a lot that's uh, misrelating to dinosaurs and all, so it was really important to me to figure out as best as is possible. Right. So we decided to get the Genius Garage Ford F-350 turbo diesel extended crew cab uh, truck. <laughs> so of course we fashioned this giant cradle out of wood, which was like exactly the legal limit of the widest thing that can drive down the road. And uh, so the pterosaur could sit on it with its wing membranes and its back and all. And underneath we could have ropes and uh, winches and everything to control this thing and fly. So we uh, took the thing out, got some of the students early in the morning, starting to get chilly. And I got a friend of mine who's got a big farm where it's really flat and perfect and really long gravel road. And uh, I'm going to leave the rest of this for my next story. But yes, it did fly, it was cool, and wrestling a dinosaur while it's flying is one of the scariest and most exciting things I've ever done. See you next time.